everybody. Happy almost St. Patrick's Day. If we were at school, we would probably talk a little bit about shamrocks and clovers. So um, I'm going to talk about those a little bit and then I will show you how to make your own uh, very simple ones similar to the ones you see here behind me. Um, I also heard about a cool community project going on tomorrow um, that I'll tell you about when we get a little bit closer. So the first thing we were wondering was what is the difference between a shamrock and a clover? And so shamrock is a pretty specific term that we use for this holiday and it can refer to uh, mostly one kind of clover, a white clover. But if you say clover, you might be referring to any uh, plant in the trifolium family. And so if you look at the word trifolium, it starts with the prefix T-R-I. So we think of tricycle and triangle. So T-R-I, our prefix tri is gonna mean three. And folium means, it sounds like foliage, it's a root term that means leaves. So a trifolium plant has three leaves and our basic clovers all have three leaves. However, every once in a while something just a little different happens and they might come out with four leaves some even have five or six leaves. But it's considered lucky because it's pretty rare because usually they all have three leaves. So this little project that we heard about said on St. Patrick's Day, since most of us are still at home, that it would be fun to make some shamrocks and hang them in our windows and then on St. Patrick's Day, which is tomorrow, to take a walk with your family and do a scavenger hunt and count and find out how many shamrocks you can find around your neighborhood, hanging in windows of your neighbors, or maybe somebody has decorated uh, their yard or a yard sign or something like that, or something on a store that you walk past. So I wanted to participate with Tiger Lily and we made some shamrocks to hang up in our windows. So I'll show you how to make some if you'd like to uh, make some and hang in your windows. The first thing you're gonna need is, um, I mean really all you need is paper and some scissors. Even if you didn't have scissors, you could probably use a tearing technique. I found some green paper at my house and I've got some scissors. And I'm also um, just collected, oh, you'll also want um, either glue, a glue stick, or some tape. And for fun, I have some green pencils just to add some details, or maybe have a green marker, or even a regular pencil. So just a couple of uh, materials. The first thing, I'll just show you a very simple how to make a big one, and then... Um, we can show you a couple of variations from there. So I'm just gonna take my piece of paper. If you have a white piece of paper, that's fine too. I just happen to have some green around. And I'm gonna fold it in half one time. It doesn't even have to be perfect. So I just folded it in half and then I'm gonna fold it in half again. Okay, so if you open it up, I've got four sections because I'm gonna make a four-leafed clover because I feel like why not make the lucky one. I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut all of those sections apart. Again, I'm trying to stay on the line, but it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. It's art, so it never really has to be perfect. Just do your best. Okay. What you'll end up with is four pieces that are all about the same size. So I'm gonna put those to the side and start with just one. 
and I'm going to fold it in half again. So watch where my fold stays. Okay, so I'm folding corner to corner. And right now, here's my fold side. I'm pinching all up and down this fold side right here. Okay, now what you want to do is cut a half a heart shape with the middle part on your fold. So again, here's my fold side, okay? So right here on my fold, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna draw it for you first, and then I'll cut it. So I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna come up, make a round top, and then down. It's a half of a heart. Let me see if you can see that. It's a half of a heart shape. And I just did it quick. It can be as neat or as wide or as skinny as you want, okay? And I'm gonna cut that half a heart. Now I'm gonna look at my work, so I'm gonna turn it around for me, okay? And I'm cutting up, and I decided to go to make it just like a little bit skinnier. I just wanna pull that in a little bit, and that's just up to me. It's how I wanted it. When I unfold, whoa! When I unfold my half a heart, it makes a full heart. So I just fold it in half, and then I cut half a heart shape. And I'm gonna do that same thing with the rest of them. Fold, starting at the top, curve around, and then come right back to the fold, okay? That is not how I would normally cut. I'm just doing it like that for the camera so you can see the line I'm tracing. Someday I'll figure out some technology where you can look down at my plate, at my workspace. Two hearts, one, two. Are they exactly the same? No, that's okay. Clovers in nature have some variation, so I'm just doing my best. Third one, I'm gonna be a little bit safer now here. Let me see if I actually, there we go. This is how I would normally do it in front of myself. See how I'm turning my paper and not my scissors. Okay. Now, when you open them up, if you feel like this is a little too wide or it's not exactly the shape you want, I'm just gonna go back in and trim it up again and just trim off a little tiny part of it. And now I like that shape better. It's really up to me, whatever I like. One more, and then I'll have four little heart shapes for my clover. Oh, I made this one kind of short. It's okay. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four little heart shapes. One thing we found for myself that I like, and then I'm gonna decorate if I want before I put them together. So I'm saving my scraps, I'm gonna use those in a minute. But right now for my heart shape, I'm gonna take my darker color and I'm gonna just kinda of go around the outside of the heart shape because I think it shows the shape of the leaf pretty well. And I'm not even, I'm just kinda of doing a little sketch, little shading. I'm not doing any kind of pattern or worried about making it too tidy um, because I'm just trying to kind of color in and give some shading on my leaf shape. Okay, so I just colored around the outside. If you guys want, like sometimes it feels like, um, you know, there's some shading maybe like that on the leaf. It's up to you if you want to draw. Um, rainbows and a unicorn on yours, you can do that too. It's however you like it. So I'm just taking my uh, pencil and I'm doing the same thing to all three or all four of my leaves. I'm on my fourth one now, just coloring the um, 
dark edges, the margin. Ah, remember the margin of my leaf blade. Okay. And put in that little bit of shading because I liked it. Okay, so now I've got one, two, three, and four. And they all look very similar. Um, you might want to take a different color green. Sometimes you'll see um, where a shamrock or a clover has kind of a, a ring of a different color green right around the inside. Right, it's kind of a shape like this, like a little rainbow right on the leaf. And if you want to do that, I'm just kind of uh, doing like a zigzag fire shape in just a little, little bow, a little rainbow shape near the bottom. I'm not worrying about making it perfect. I'm just uh, putting a little detail on there so it looks fun. For me, you don't have to do that part either, okay? Now comes the super fun part of putting them together. So I'm gonna protect my workspace by putting down one of my scraps from before. I'm gonna put that on the table first. And then I'm gonna see if I can move my camera without making you dizzy. Maybe you can't see my workspace. Hang on one sec. Okay, so I think that you can see my workspace here now. So I have my one leaf and I'm looking at the side that I decorated. And I'm just, I'm gonna put some glue right here at the end. So I'm protecting my desk, my table, by just doing it on top of this scrap paper. So I'm gonna take a, my glue and I'm just putting a little, kind of heavy because it's heavy paper, but I'm just putting it right at the corner. And I'm gonna take one of my other leaf shapes and just press their points together. I'm gonna to add a little more glue. Right over top of both of those. And put my other leaf shape on the top. So I have one and two across from each other, and then this one here on the top. Now, because I kind of want to hide where I attach the stem, I'm going to take one of my scraps, like we were saving, and I'm going to cut a stem shape out of this top scrap. So I'm making the bottom a little wider, and I'm coming up, just one, strip of paper. Stem shape, doesn't have to be perfect at all. Add my little bit of glue right here to the center. Let's see if you can see right there on the center. And I'm gonna put my stem down first. And then a little more glue on top. And my fourth leaf. Oops. It's okay if it slips around, I'm just gonna stick it back on there. Okay, so now I kind of put my stem off to the side and I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna count mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not completely dry, but if I'm very, very gentle, I should be able to pick it up and take it off of my scrap paper. And there is my shamrock. My fingers are a little bit sticky. So I'm going to set it somewhere safe now to go ahead and finish drying. And when it finishes uh, drying, I'm going to take it upstairs and I'm going to put a piece of tape on the back and tape it up in my window. So there's that. If you want to make uh, bigger or smaller ones, let's see. Okay, we're back. If you want to make some bigger or smaller ones, you can see here, I made a really tiny one. Just start with smaller pieces of paper to begin with, or um, you can cut smaller squares. So I can even use some of my scrap if I wanted to get really, really crafty. And I could cut out every time you fold in half and cut a half. See me turn my paper cut out a half heart, 
trim it up the way you want it. Very tiny. I could cut four of those from just the scraps that I have from making my big one. And you can make a couple of different shapes and sizes. Follow the same steps to decorate and attach them. And hopefully you guys will enjoy your St. Patrick's Day scavenger hunts. Um, go ahead and feel free to send me a picture if you find something good on your hunt and I will uh, try to share those out. Okay, hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day. Bye!